Now that you've seen how easy it is to use the appearance panel to add or modify fills and strokes for a shape, I think you're starting to see how handy it can be. But it gets even better. Now, instead of having to go up to the Effects menu to add effects, you can add effects right in the Appearance panel. So if I want to add a Drop Shadow, it's very easy to just choose Stylize, Drop Shadow from the little FX icon at the bottom of the Appearance panel. When you check Preview, then you can see the results of your choices. But here's something kind of neat, too. Maybe I don't want to add the shadow to the whole shape, so I'm going to cancel here. Remember how I could move strokes up and down and how I could add additional strokes? Well, keep in mind that you can address each one of those attributes of a shape separately, and you can apply separate effects to each attribute. So I could choose the black stroke, and remember it's sort of at the top of the pile. There's the blue stroke on the bottom, the red fill of the shape, and then the black stroke at the top of the pile. So I'm going to choose that stroke, go back to my effects menu, choose Stylize and Drop Shadow. And now when I choose Preview, you'll see that the shadow is not applied to the whole shape, it's applied to just that stroke. Notice how dimensional it looks. So you start to get the idea that you can treat each one of these attributes of a shape as a separate element, and you can do some pretty complex things starting out with something pretty simple. So I'll leave that on there. Then I'm going to select another stroke, the blue stroke, that's behind at the bottom of the pile. I'm going to choose FX again, and this time I'm going to choose the scribble effect. Now the scribble effect looks like you've scribbled with a pencil or a marker. So I can choose to make the path overlap a little tighter, and that makes it more dense, as if you'd held your marker very close as you move back and forth. I can change the variation. The higher the variation, the more random this looks. I can change the stroke width. I can change the curviness. So it's like having an infinitely adjustable marker that behaves in sort of an organic manner. Now one thing to consider about all these attributes, here I have two strokes, a fill, a scribble on one of the strokes, I have a shadow on one of the strokes. It looks like I have a lot going on, and I do, but under the hood, if I go to View and Outline, you'll see that it's still just that simple original shape. So what if I wanted to change the appearance of one of these little scribbles? It's pretty random, and it, all I can control are just the settings in that scribble dialog. But if I wanted to grab a point and move it, I don't have any separate little points to move. Well, that's where Expand comes in. Expand doesn't mean make bigger or make fluffier. In Illustrator, Expand means make it literal. You saw in the outline, all this scribble effect is just an effect. It's not literal multiple paths. But when I choose Expand Appearance, now when I go into Outline Mode, you'll see that all those little shapes are as if I had drawn them uh, painstakingly with the Pen Tool. Now I can use my Direct Selection Tool. I can grab one of these points. I can move it. I can do some pretty interesting things by grabbing them and just moving them all at once. And now I have complete control over this shape. So if you ever want to just sort of get down in the corners and completely control something that was created by an effect, remember to choose Expand under the Object menu, and then you turn it into literal pads that you can then modify.